put your hands together celebrate the name of Jesus celebrate the name of Jesus he's worthy Lord we bless you and we lift you we continue to invite you because you are here we invite you not just in this space we invite you in our hearts because this is the day you have made we shall rejoice and be glad in it and we thank you because you're right here where we are in Jesus name we pray Amen. One more time, put your hands together. Celebrate the victorious name of Jesus. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Please take your seats. Thank you, worship team. Would you put your hands together one more time? Celebrate Jesus for these amazing people in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Come on, good morning. Buona Are you well? Are you well? Are you glad you came to the house today? Amen. I'm glad I'm here too. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again and Jesus is Lord. I thank God for the opportunity to stand here and minister um, the gospel. It is the honor of my life to serve God and his people here in Zimmerman under Bishop Dr. Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice Kimani. The true honor of my life and I thank the Lord for this opportunity. It's also such a beautiful thing to stand here on today in on the 21st of February in 2021, the day today is 21 to 21, all right? And it's beautiful to stand here today just in case you had not noticed. All right, won't you turn to your neighbor and say good morning to them just from right behind your mask? Just tell them good morning. Don't be afraid of them. Turn to somebody on the other side of you as well. Tell them good morning. Yes, yes, yes. It is beautiful to see um, those of us who remembered that today is African Sunday. Uh, you look bright and colorful. Thank you for representing the rest of us who, um, for various reasons, were not able to, <laughs> to do this. Amen. Bless you. Yes. Today we're going to talk about um, a beautiful thing that is called joy. So my topic today, or my working title at least, was the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. I want you to say it as if there is air in your lungs. The fullness of joy. You could put a little more life to it. Say the fullness of joy. We're going to be taking it from the book of Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. And I'm going to be reading. It's um, not very long. It's just about 11 verses. But I'm not going to read the whole of it. I'm just going to read verse from verse 8. We actually read from verse 8 to verse 11. If that's okay, we're going to go together. One, two, three, let's read. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures of more. Let's read that again. You will show me in your presence at your right hand. Father, we ask that you would speak to us in accents clear and still. That when we leave this place, it shall be evident that we have been in the place where our Father is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm just going to do a brief introduction of um, the psalm, chapter 16, that we've just read. It's called A Meek Term of David, uh, and it's a beautiful psalm. It relates a couple of things. Uh, just from reading the verse, you're able, to, um, you're able to deduce. Is it to deduce or deduct? You're able to tell that um, this psalm was written in a time of peril. It was written in a time of difficulty, Okay. So if you're going through some difficulty, I want you to know that David was sort of going through something that you were going through, that something like what you are going through, some difficulty of whatever sort. You see, the thing about difficulty or difficult times that makes it interesting is that what is difficult to you is not what is difficult to me. And so I cannot stand in this place and say, Nyinyi hamjui shida nyinyi, because you haven't been in my life. I can say that, okay? Just because you might be older than me, uh, by like two times does not mean that I do not know what trouble or difficulty is. That's the thing about difficulty. That's also one of the various, one of the uh, things that makes us all be able to have a personal relationship with God. Because if difficulty were to be measured by other people's experiences, then a lot of us would not have the opportunity to come to God with our needs. But because 
difficulty is subject specific. It depends on you. What is difficult to you might not be difficult to me, but what is difficult to me might not even be difficult to you. That's what allows us to be close to God. All right. I remember a time some, some years back when we, were, when we were crossing over into the new year. I don't remember quite which year. But as Bishop was leading us in that uh, crossing over, he mentioned, he prayed over us. And in the prayer that he made among the things he said is that may, this year may you encounter enough challenges to keep you close to God. Enough problems to keep you human. How many of you people know that... If you have stayed for very long without losing a loved one, you feel with other people, but sometimes you forget. So you go to people and you tell them some absurd things when they have lost a loved one. You tell them, Ata, unajua, by the way, achakulia sana. Unajua shukuru mungu, ata alikupatia ati mama yako miaka 20. Unajua unawale ata mama yao anakufa wakizaliwa. That's true, but that's not helpful right now. You see, when you say such kinds of things, again, you're just trying to be helpful. So we are not holding it against you. Okay, maybe you've caught yourself saying that. I know I have caught myself saying that a couple of times. But then when you go through your own kind of difficulty, you lose a loved one. It's like a refresher course. It keeps you human. The next time after you, you have healed, as you go, when you hear somebody has lost a loved one, you remember how your cell leaders came to your place. Na kitambu, Na uko ati kapsabet. Uko ni mbali. Wacha ni ende fellowship ya hapa karibu. But then you lose a loved one. Na watu wanakuja uko kwenye usio mbali ni hapa tu muranga. Lakini wanashuka kwa hiyo mikuru. Wanateremka hivi. Mali watu wakirusha mchanga warushi hivi. Wanarusha hivi. Kwa sababu wamesimama hivi. Do you know those places? Yeah? When something like that happens to you, the next time you hear something has, some, something has happened to that someone, not just loss. Something, somebody has lost a job. Oh man, you, you relate differently. You carry a, a loaf of bread when you go to see them. Eh? Because you know, when you, you, maybe you've lost a job recently and the Lord has held you and you remember a day that someone brought a loaf of bread and they thought they were just adding to your stock. They didn't know they were providing your dinner for that day. Difficulty, just enough to keep you human. Enough challenges to keep you close to God. I remember that prayer and why it stuck in my head is because I opened my eyes and looked at the bishop and was wondering, excuse me, what did you just order for us? It's like when you go to a restaurant and somebody orders something for you. <laughs> and they're like, ah, no, situmiangi hiyo. <laughs> it's difficult, situmiangi sana. Wacha wasini lete. <laughs> but I thank God in walking, walking close to him, I have learned that it is actually a necessary thing. So when David is, give, is writing this psalm, he's in a place of difficulty. And all of us are able to relate because your difficulty might not be mine, but it is difficulty anyway. Bwana sifiwe. So it seems that David has written this in a time of trouble because he asks God for preservation. Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole of it, but it has 11 verses. You could go back to it. If you have nothing to study this week, you can study Psalm chapter 16. It's really beautiful. So in verse 1, he says, preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. So when he's praying, preserve me, somebody does not just make that prayer uh, unless they are going through something. There's something that prompts you to make that prayer. So he continues uh, in making that prayer, and takes confidence in God. A couple of times in that psalm, like in verse 8, um, he, he says uh, that he will not be greatly moved. He's, he's making this prayer of preservation and puts faith together with it. He says, because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. The psalm, even though he's in a, play, in a time of difficulty, is not a psalm of despair. We know other psalms of despair and complaint and lament, but this is not one of those. It's written in a time of difficulty, but it is a psalm of settled joy. There is some joy that, that is inside there as you read it. There is a certain confidence that David has, has found in this portion of scripture. Despite his trouble, David has the confidence uh, of praising God. Or he's praising God in confidence. So what is the confidence that we get? His confidence we can get in the kind of prayer that he makes. He asks, preserve me, O God. I like one of the, uh, of the, of the commentaries that I read uh, by, by Charles Spurgeon. And Spurgeon puts it this way. It is as if David will pray and say to God, preserve me from the world. Let me not be carried away by the excitements of the world. Let me not be before its blandishments. Let me not be carried away by the frowns. Because you and I both know that in this world we face challenges. Different things at different times. And then it is as if he would also say, preserve me from the devil. 
Let him not tempt me above what I am able to bear. Preserve me from the evil one. As if he will also say, preserve me from myself. I don't know how many of you have found yourself making that prayer. I know I've made that prayer enough times where I'm crying out to God and saying, God, please save me from myself. The Bible says the foolish woman destroys her house with her own hands. All right? So it is a valid prayer to ask God sometimes, save me from myself. Because you know yourself, I know myself too. Sometimes you're the one who takes yourself. As you read the Bible and it's talking about there are six things that the Lord hates. Indeed, seven that are, uh, an abo- what is that? Abomination to him, thank you. Among those things is feet that rush off to do evil. Your own feet are the ones that are putting you You are the one that is rushing towards evil. So when you're making the prayer, you can ask God, God, save me from myself. David is making that prayer. Save me from myself. Keep me from growing envious. Keep me from being selfish. Keep me from being high-minded. Like what we were being taught about in the first service last Sunday. Um, Circumcising the foreskin of your heart again and again. Because, and I love the examples that um, uh, Pastor Sikuku was giving. He was saying, "Uh, I am a man of Luya tribe. You might be one, two. And then <laughs> so sometimes it is in the pride. And see, Joyce, Joyce Meyer says, the most deceptive sin is pride. Because even when you have it, you are too proud to admit it. You see, it, it creeps up under us. We don't even know it. And we said recently, somebody, I think Professor Waithimon, he was preaching here some time back, and he said, proud people... Don't go saying they are proud. You don't stand here and say, in fact, it is the proud people that say, me by this in anger pride. Kakuna kiri mdu ungu wali nyo ni pride. Mimi sinanga pride. So you can see the person who is just, you know, looks proud, they might not be. Kwa kweli umdani endie? Siye kwa kweli. So he's saying, save me from pride, save me from myself, selfishness, envy, high-mindedness, slothfulness, being lazy at what I'm supposed to be doing, procrastination, which I'm sure enough of us deal with every day. We push forward something that we were supposed to do today. And somebody said to us that procrastination is the highest form of pride because you are lying to yourself or assuming or demanding that you will have another chance to do what God has given you the chance to do today. May God save us from all that. And then finally, he says, preserve me from those evils which, into which I see other people running into. Preserve me from those evils. Now, nanga wengine wakiende hizo, please let me not go into those places. Because Pastor Alice has reminded us here that you see somebody else, your attitude should be, there goes Moshigadi, but for the grace of God. That we never look at somebody and think, hmm, 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 their sin is stinking to the highest heavens. Whoa, what a terrible Christian. Hmm? No, you say to yourself, oh, there goes me but for the grace of God. If it were not for the grace of God, I would be them or even worse. So you say, God, save me, preserve me from the sins that I see others running to, and then preserve me from the evils which I myself, I am also so capable and so sometimes so, so given to running toward. Then he makes another prayer and says, my goodness is nothing apart from you. David knew, like apart from God, that All his goodness was nothing. Apart from God, there is no goodness in me. Apart from God, there is no goodness in you. Yesterday, we were having a discussion with my sister in the evening. And we were talking about how, because growing up, I was very silent, very kept to myself, very timid, very introverted. Very, very much. Uh, I prefer the back seat than the front seat. That doesn't seem true because I'm always standing here. But... Growing up, it was more pronounced than it is right now. And she made a statement and said, you see, sometimes we look at people or even we look at ourselves and we assume just because we are kept together that we are not bad people. I know when you've gone for evangelism, those of you who have, um, uh, you have maybe found, your, uh, found somebody saying to you, um, You see, we forget that it is not the bad things that we are doing that make us bad people. We are just naturally born in sin after the fall of man. So we need a savior. Every one of us needs Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So David knew, know this, knows this. Hey? David knows this. And he says, apart from you, my goodness is nothing apart from you. It was nothing because David's goodness, as precious as it might have been, was of very little neglectable value if it was not of God. Hallelujah. That you're able to say, I, in and of myself, have nothing good. 
It is only God. There is a song we are listening to again with Pastor Kibera. And it's a Kikuyu song and the guy is saying, I was not a good person. I have never been a good person. Even when you see me like this. It is God that had mercy on me. And Akani Akani Sondeka Nikakua Mtumzuri. That is also a Swahili word. All right. <laughs> the place of every believer, just like for David, must be that I, in and of myself, have nothing good. There is nothing good for people to look at. Apart from the grace of God, there is nothing good. Usione tumekauka hapa na masuti hivi. There is nothing good but for the grace of God. Have you seen somebody in a suit minus the grace of God? Oh man, that suit doesn't even look good. It is the grace of God. The, by, uh, the kikuyu word, I think, for it, or phrase for it, is to be clothed with, what is Riri? Glory? Riri is glory. To be clothed with glory. That's what God does. When he comes into the life of a man, he changes the entire thing. That even though you're wearing your nini, your nini from bend down boutique, unajua zile nguoza bend down boutique, unainama kwa street, unajichukulia, unainama, izo za uko kwa streets, mutumba izo. Even though you are wearing those ones, you appear in a place, but because you have first been clothed with glory, you look like you're desirable. People look at you and they see there's something in the mouth of this young man. They let us sit and listen. There's nothing good in me or in you. It doesn't matter how long you've been born again. It is by the grace of God that we stand the way we stand. Hallelujah. I love the many times that the bishop draws the parallel and says there's Kemani the man and Kemani the man of God. In that statement, it is loaded in saying that if it is not for God, there will be only Kemani the man. But blessed be God that there's the glory of God. We get to drink from Kemani the man of God. Hallelujah. That was the place of David. So David understood that all that he had, every good thing he had, came from God. I want you to say that as if you mean it with your chest. Say, all the good I have is from God. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you feel like I am robbing you by saying that statement? Because it is not robbery, it is true. There is nothing good of you. Until you come to that place, you will never be in a place of full dependence on God. Because even on your finest day, I love one of the things that the prophet Isaiah says, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Not our sinfulness, our righteousness. Me, on my best day, when I have fulfilled all righteousness, when I have not been given to the, the, the little foxes that so easily destroy the vineyard, when I have not given myself to the sin that's on the weights that so easily encumber us or entangle us, on my best day, when I have fulfilled all righteousness, still, when God looks at my works, they are as filthy rags. Oh, but for the grace of God, because the righteous one became unrighteous, that you and I may become the righteousness of God. That now when God looks at me, he's not looking at Moshigadi the man, he's looking at the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That is the beauty of the believer. Hallelujah. Until you come to that place, you have, there is no way you will humble yourself. There is no way you will look at somebody else and remember mercy over them and pray for them. You will always be looking at them and wondering, Hallelujah. I love the hymn that we sang. It says, to God be the glory. In one of the verses, it says, we, don't, we didn't sing it here. We sang it many years ago. But it says that the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. That is your story. That is somebody else's story as well. Hallelujah. So in that portion of scripture, now that brings us to where we are after the confidence of David. Because we are living in such a generation right now that has such a short exp a a a attention span. Right now, we, we get so easily driven away. Our attention gets so stolen. Any, we, we cannot just concentrate. We can't just fix our minds on the presence of Jesus. Sometimes I hear stories. I like to read stories of people um, in, the, in the generation of our bishop and before who talk about the, the, the revival that happened in the 80s and the 70s. And I read books about the Azusa Street revival and all those things about people who went into the presence of God in their youth and they sat in meetings and tarried. You know what it means to tarry? is to sit and wait without another agenda until the Lord does what he wants to do. 
We live in such a generation that is so packed with so many things, you don't even have time to just settle in the presence of God. That it not it absurd that we have to fit God into our schedule? We have 24 hours that have been given to us every day, but I have to find some special time to, to just fellowship with God. How crazy is that? Oh, I'm, I'm speaking about myself as well, okay? Lest you feel attacked. No, I'm speaking about myself as well. That in all the time that God has given to us, I have time for my office where I spend from like 8 to 5 or 9 to 6 or whatever time that I'm in the office, but I don't have time to just sit with God extended periods. Like I couldn't just take an off day and just spend the day. Today I'm just spending the day with Jesus. Oh man. We live in that kind of generation. Short attention spans. We have a constant need for excitement and adrenaline rush. Like wow, what is coming up today? Woo! Especially in the young generation where I belong, yeah? in the youth. We find ourselves, we just want the, the next big thing. Like wow, we have a what? A worship experience. Sometimes I want to say thank God for COVID because it came to slow us down. That now we are not worrying about what next event, like we are waiting. What, what, what is happening? Actually, at some point, we, <laughs> at some point, we just, there was not much happening around church. There was not enough programs when we were starting. You just had to make your own time. You remember when we introduced um, the suggestion to, or the recommendation to have your own family hour of prayer? You just have to make it in your own home. Just as a church, akuna sa utadu. But that, such is the time that we are living in. But we need to know by experience what David knew. There was, there's something, beloved, about spending time in the presence of God. There's something about being where God is. Because I believe with all my heart, the greatest tragedy of man is to be where God is not. It doesn't matter how great it is. If you are where you are and God is not there, man, that is the greatest tragedy of all time. And it saddens my heart because it is so easy for you to find yourself where God is not. I think we are so used to nibble at the table of the world. To just, you know, to just eat the crumbs that are falling. We are just so okay with that. We, we can ignore drinking deep drafts of God. It is so easy for us to forget how thrilling it is to just sit where God is. Kwa sababu kwa meza enye umeandaliwa na mungu wamekuandalia na akakualika. Minofu ilio hapo ni minofu yako. There is a place reserved for you. You know when you go to those weddings, invites only, ikona kakadi, kamen, kwa Brian, mwashigadi. Ukiingi hapo, unakali yo kiti sawa sawa. Kwa sababu it's your place on the table. But when you're going to a place where you've not been invited, like in the world, you know the day you give your life to Jesus, if you're here, you're a believer, let me just talk to you for a minute. The day you give your life to Jesus, the, if there was a place at the table of the enemy for you, that card was discarded because now you quit the club. So your place now is in the at the table of God. So every time you're not at the table of God, your seat is empty. Unajifinyilia uku at the table of the world. Lakini kwa sababu shetani hezi akakufukuza, nisema musongeni hapo, mtengeneze nafasi hapo. There's always space here for somebody. Uko mnakula tu githeri peke haki. Lakini unaona ni kama wow. Unasikia vinyo watu wanasamanga. Aki chakula ya watu wengi ni tamu. That's the mentality we have with the world. Because the table of God is not crowded. There is a place inside there for everyone. How do I know that? The Bible says that in the book of Colossians chapter 1 from verse 16. It says in the message, so spacious and so roomy is he. That everything in the world finds its place in him. There is space for you in the kingdom of God. At God's table there is a space for you. But at the table of the world when you gave, your, your, you gave up your place. So, ni wapi uko unaenda kujirudisha? Lakini ukifika, just because you're invited at the table of the enemy, you think you're invited. You think you fit in. I'm just ministering to them. I am just, no, you're not. I remember, I remember a time when Bishop was preaching about, um, I think it was their day, and he was saying about vinye wachungaji walikuwa anaenda kuubiri kwa maba. Ati wanaenda uko wana, ati sasa ya kunyu ya nabletewa samosa. Unakula tu samosa tuwa uko, unakula tu samosa tuwa uko. Saa ukitoka uko, unaangalia, look right, look right. Ndiyo usitoke wa shirika wa fikiriwa kwa ni. Ata una amani uko. Na hapa kanisani unaweza tu ukaingia hivi. Ata unataka hata watu wajua unaingianga kanisani by the way. There is no space for you at the table of the world. 
You gave up your place a long time ago. Quit going back to it. May God help us, man. May God help us to quit the table of the... Because we already quit it. To quit it, quit it. Hallelujah. In the presence of God, why should we stay there? Number one, there is exclusivity of joy. Exclusivity of joy to mean it is exclusive. The exclusivity of joy is in the presence of God. Listen to what it says. It says, in your presence is fullness of joy. I want you to understand this one thing. Fullness means this. It is the state of being complete or whole. Fullness means the state of being complete or whole. That means this simply. That in the presence of God, there is joy in its fullness, in its wholeness. That means this. There is not a single crumb, a single chunk. Even the idea of joy is nowhere else but in the presence of God. Listen up, guys. You see the way you can take a piece of bread. You guys, all of us have interacted with bread at least. I, if I had come with a piece of bread, it would be very easy. But I know all of you know what bread is. These are crumbs. Now, if the presence of God, if, the, if joy was a piece of bread, when you lift it, there is no crumb that will fall apart. Because the presence of God carries the fullness of joy. The crumbs of joy, the chunks of joy, the muscles of joy, even the smell of joy, the fullness of joy is only in the presence of God. The Bible says exclusively that in his presence is the fullness of joy. Now, what does that mean? It means if you're not in the presence of God, you're not experiencing joy. It might look like you're enjoying. It might look like joy, but it is not joy. Whatever you think you have been experiencing outside of the presence of God, if it is zest, um, 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 evangelist Reinhard Bonnke used to say, zest in a bottle, gusto in a hypodermic needle, whatever you're looking for, like a tablet that you swallow and it gives you nini, you smoke like a puff and you feel so exhilarated, it gives you joy, it looks like joy, but I'm bringing it down to you today, it is not joy. Because joy in all its fullness, the smell of it, the idea of it, the crumbs of it, the pieces of it, all the fullness of joy was taken and transported into the presence of God and outside was left nothing of joy. Hallelujah. Man, that, that, that makes me think twice. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the presence of God. Because I, I think to myself, if all of joy is inside <laughs> the presence of God, imagine what is out there. It's like if I came and told you today, Maziwa ya ukweli, maziwa. Unaona maziwa ya ukweli? Inapatikana Brookside peke yake. So unajiuliza, kama miaka tano sija kunywa Brookside kwangu, nina kunywaka mengine. This is just an example because our services go out. Um, um, this is just an example. <laughs> Lest we are sued with slander. It's just a Christian example. For the purposes of my illustrative. All right. <laughs> hey, we are living in an interesting time. Any you can. <laughs> Imagine if somebody told you the only true milk is Brookside. You're asking yourself, so what have I been drinking? See, that's a question that will be on your mind. So if I tell you in the presence of God is fullness of joy, you ask yourself, so what is out there? What have I been experiencing out there? Because sometimes I'm in the presence of God, sometimes I'm not. Like nini ni me kwani kenjo yuko inje. Do you think about it that way? Because that's what came to my mind when I read this. I thought, my yo. So what is this I've been drinking? What have I been? Oh, man. I remember growing up, my mom used to say to us, we had this a million and one times. My sister would bear me witness. And she used to say it in Kiembu, but I'll say it in English. She used to say, out there are dogs and witches and liars and workers of iniquity. So if you're outside there, ask yourself, who, whose company are you in? In Kiembu, it sounds that much better. And she was quoting scripture, that's Revelation 22 and 15. It says, out there are witches and liars 
arogi na uh, uh, oragani na all those things out there so she was asking us kama uko ndani ya Yesu uko uko nje na kina nani wewe ni mgani kati ya hao wewe ni mchawi ama mlogi wewe ni mula gani wewe ni nini so imagine if, <laughs> if you're not in the presence of god man what are you drinking out there because i can assure you i might not know exactly what we have been partaking but i can tell you this it's not joy because the presence of god carries the fullness of joy when we are doing enjoyment my generation hello when we are doing enjoyment and it is not in god's presence and the beautiful thing about god's presence is that you can carry it wherever you're going hello you can carry god's presence wherever you're going you can be with god wherever you are he's omnipresent all right and so the thing about god's presence is that if you're not with it as you're enjoymenting then you are drinking something that is terribly lethal oh man may god help us the exclusivity of joy is only found in god's presence when i was in campus wow i get to use something i learned in campus when i was in campus i studied environmental something <laughs> Oh and there's something they taught us called endemic species. Come on. All the environmentalists and conservationists in the house say yes. Okay, that's encouraging. <laughs> there's something called endemic species. What an endemic species means is something that is found just in one place, okay? It is native and restricted to a certain place. A good example here in Kenya is the the owl, the bird, the owl, O W L. It's called the Sokokes corpse owl, okay? We only found it like in Mombasa, in Mombasa, yes, in Kenya it's only found in Mombasa, like Arabuko Sokoke forest, okay? It's my opportunity. Okay, guys. <laughs> It can also be found in Tanzania, okay? But in Kenya it's only found in Mombasa at the Sokoke forest and it's only found in a certain portion of plantation which is only covers like a third of the forest, okay? So it's endemic means it is exclusively found in one place. So we will say joy is endemic to God's presence. Come on here. I mean, whoa. Oh my God help us to be in his presence because out there is nothing but not the fullness of joy. Then the expanse of pleasure number 2 the expanse of pleasure the next line says at your right hand are pleasures forevermore the expanse of pleasure it says at your right hand oh god are pleasures forevermore david had full confidence as we are reading the story of david he had full confidence that his life with god both now and forevermore because just before that he's talked about this place the afterlife where he's going to be taken Matt didn't have a lot of understanding of um the afterlife but we um because we have come after the death of jesus christ and his rising again we understand what the afterlife looks like we understand it is heaven in god's presence okay so david um he understood that his life now and forever more will be marked by the highest and best pleasures okay this is the 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 real meaning of pleasure can be understood only by thinking above shallow entertainment and excitement pleasure is not just to be excited pleasure is deeper it's not just to be entertained highly no it's deeper than that So when scripture says at his right hand are pleasures forevermore it means there's something higher than enjoyment than entertainment than excitement something far much higher in fact as you read different commentaries they will tell you that the idea the true idea of pleasure that is found in God's presence is just simply inconceivable to the human mind we try and we try and think you see because we try to understand pleasure by what we have experienced by thrill if if your greatest level of pleasure is the things that give you excitement una kanyanga gari hivi kwa sababu umepewa gari kama ya bishop una kanyanga hivi inaenda chua inapita 180 na bado uko hai unaenda tu hivi unasikia wow Maybe that is what pleasure means to you if you're a, an adrenaline junkie you like you enjoy that if you panda and ege for the first time my goodness you're just too going the hair even when you feel 
turbulence, you're excited. <laughs> well, maybe that is pleasure to you. So when you're trying to understand the idea of pleasure, you fall short because it is very, it is very, hu our finite human minds cannot quite unlock the idea of pleasure because unless we have experienced it, we don't even know. We imagine, sa pleasure ni nini. Mi naona pleasure ni uingie KFC, ukipata 350 yako. Uitishe ile, inaitangwa nini? Tupisa. Spicy. Tupisa uingie na usingoje. Waku, uitishe wakupatia kama kwa drive-thru. Hakuna waiting time. Ninaitisha kabla mata kidondoke wamenipea. Maybe to you that is pleasure. I know that was pleasure for me when I was much younger. And getting 350 was a whole project. You know when I was in primary school, I went to boarding in class 7 and 8. Of course I usually haven't prepared my mom for these examples. But I'm going to give it anyway. <laughs> when I went to boarding school, my mom used to give me um, um, pocket money. Okay. <laughs> We didn't have a canteen, of course it's primary school. It was like a small prison, but we education happened, so it's okay. Um, and when to Kifunga Shule, my mom used to come all the way to Embu to pick us, to pick me at least. She did that for all of us, but she used to come to Embu to pick me. So my fare, ile pesa matumizi yangu ni alikuwa na nipatia 350, okay. So kwa hiyo 350, 2004 was a lot of money. So hiyo 350, ni nalipa 270, nifike Embu town. Kutoka St. Matthew's Mixed Boarding Primary School Kianjokoma. Alright, in Embu. So, nikisha fika Embu, fanya 350 minus 70. Nilikuwa na mkabithi hizo hela. Na muambia, ulicho ni kabithi, ndio haya masalio. Nilianza accounting kitambo. Accountability. <laughs> so now, when I started knowing that my friends go out and they buy for themselves, like, kapita in, I'm like, hala, hala. Eti nimekua nikilalia maskio miaka mingu kwa kwele. So I started to, I started to, <laughs> to save. Unarudisha mia, unarudisha 50, ile tamingine haurudishi chochote kwa kweli. Because pleasure for me was to take myself to a, like, pizza inn, or, or what was the name of that place? Um... Uh, debonairs in town and just buy a pizza. The small one, but that not withstanding, just buy myself a pizza and sit there and eat it alone. <sighs> you see, for me, that was pleasure then because my human mind ha could only think, even when I'm told far much more than you can think, ask or imagine. Our small minds are so limited, Ephesians 3 and 20. That's why it continues, adds and says, according to the power that works within you. Because the power that works within you is the Holy Spirit of God that blows open your mind to ask for the moon like Bishop taught us. Because without the Holy Spirit of God, you just ask, you look at your life and say, hey, amenyambia niitisha kitu. Let me give this final example. <laughs> Went to Nakuru with the pastors some years back and Bishop Mark called somebody, an old member, and asked him, what do you want? The man was like, what do I want? What do I... Bishop Park is asking, what can I do to change your life? What do you want? And the man said, Nataka suti. <laughs> you should have seen Pastor Kibera and myself. What? You want a suit? Tunasema atujari busisi. Atuite sisi. Akisema nikupe nini. Unaisema as a statement. Unasema ninge penda ploti ilio na nyumba ya kuegeza gari ambalo litakuwa na... Unajua, ni statement moja lakini umtu anasema, why did I ask this question? Our minds are so limited. But because of the power of God that works within us, we can ask in faith. Because we understand whatever we ask for in his name, it shall be given. We understand God is limitless. Because who can know the mind of a man unless the spirit of that man within him? Therefore, who can know the mind of God unless the spirit of God? So because of the spirit of God, we can cry out and ask, Lord, mercy, save that person. Lord, do this and he will do it. Lord, heal. Lord, save. Lord, deliver. We look like crazy people when we ask for crazy things, but the Spirit of God working within us, in His presence, we understand there are pleasures evermore. Woo! 
through the expanse of pleasure, man, in the presence of God, and my time is up. I want to submit to you, beloved, that it is possible for you to achieve both. That would be number three, the achievement of both. The achievement of both simply means this, yeah? That now the refugee in the first place who will say, in, in this Psalm chapter 16, he says, you are my portion of inheritance and my cup. Verse 5. The refugee now who says I have nothing. You see, David was a last born son in a family of very many sons. He probably did not have an earthly inheritance. But he was content in the fact that God was his inheritance. The Lord appears to Abraham in Genesis 15 and says to him, I am your exceedingly great compensation and your reward shall be humongous. For the believer you understand that for me, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. But where do you get these things? Only in his presence. If you're here and you understand, because you know your life, you know what your life looks like. Sometimes you're in, you're in God, you're born again, but you're not in his presence all the time. You know where you go to find pleasure. You know where you, you try to. Sometimes it's in your job. It's not the bad things. Remember when Jesus is, is giving the parable of the banquet feast, Luke chapter 15 or is it 14? Gives the example and he's inviting people and this man gets mad. Why? Because one says, I can't come. I have gotten a new wife. I can't come. I've bought a new piece of land. I can't come. I've bought a team of, I bought a team of oxen. It's not just only the bad things. So don't be seated here and think, I'm not doing any bad things. Sometimes we derive pleasure from other things. And so there's a poem by John Flavel and he asks, where have you been, oh my soul? Could you not find pleasure in the creator? That every night you ask your soul, where have you been today? Could you not abide by the fountain of delights? Could you not sit in the presence of God? Could you just not sit where God is? Is there more pleasure in the creation than in the creator? Could you not just sit at the presence of God? Because in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures evermore. Father, in Jesus' name we ask that you will let this truth ring every day of our lives. That we will never forget that the fullness of joy, its exclusivity, Everything about joy is only found in your presence. And evermore, every day, undepletable pleasures. Pleasures forevermore. That when we have consumed pleasure today, tomorrow we can still find more pleasure and more. And it is not just what our short, small, finite minds can get. It is great, inconceivable pleasures. By the power of your Holy Spirit, they are only found in one place, at your right hand, in your presence. We want to achieve both, Lord Jesus. So we pray today in broken hearts that you will help us to find pleasure in you every day of our lives. Let us stay in your presence at your feet forever. Teach us by the power of your Holy Spirit because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you.